Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, this is um, a collaboration between uh, Student Generale in ESN Tilburg uh, on our series Introducing the Netherlands. Uh, the topic today is uh, cycling culture and uh, we have two speakers from um, uh, the Cycling Institute in uh, Amsterdam uh, that are going to tell um, us some information about uh, cycling culture here in the Netherlands. Um, yeah, uh, I would also like to thank uh, Jarno from uh, my academic committee for uh, uh, contacting the speakers. Uh, and um, yeah, that's it. Uh, if uh, one of you, Vikas or either Lindsay, uh, whichever one of you can start. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm Vikas. Uh, I'm here along with my colleague Lindsay, and we, rep uh, uh, we represent the Urban Cycling Institute, that is the think tank from uh, in the University of Amsterdam, which mostly we uh, we, we do the uh, policy advocacy and research on the cycling uh, in Amsterdam, as well as uh, uh, sometimes we also uh, like work with some other uh, governments, uh, other nations who, who wants to uh, improve their biking infra infrastructure. And I'm glad to be here today. Uh, uh, yeah, so so me, uh, uh, I'll, I'll be just explaining the brief about how the cycling culture, uh, 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 how how the how we like uh, Netherlands is seen as one of the cycling haven in on the earth. So like they have the best biking culture, like highest uh, model share in the biking infrastructure. Uh, so I'll be just uh, trying to. Uh, 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 understand, like, uh, make, make you understand how, how we came, came here uh, till now. Uh, are all of you are Dutch, or like, are you from like any of you from the like uh, other country? Okay, cool. Uh, because like, uh, just to give a brief about uh, where I come from. So I come from India. And this is how our streets looks like. So you can see, so streets are definitely wider, but you don't see a space in it at all. Uh, and uh, you can't even see the any bikers there. You can see the lot of the two wheelers. So basically we are the motorized two wheelers, uh, but uh, we don't have like a lot of uh, bikes in there. And, and the, the biggest cultural difference that I realized when I came in here is uh, uh, how we look down uh, upon the bikers, uh, uh, so so basically, uh, the, uh, when I was back in India, I, I last time I uh, rode a cycle was when I was 16 years old, and now I'm almost 30. So, uh, so basically, we only ride a bike when we are a kid, and after like when when we go high, go to high school, we never touch the bike uh, somehow, but. Uh, when I moved in here, I was surprised or pleasantly surprised to see uh, these things. So uh, that was kind of a lockdown when I moved in. Uh, so uh, streets were like mostly empty. And I was so fascinated to see uh, the empty streets, uh, streets dedicated to the bikers and especially this, this street uh, uh, image on the left. So that's a uh, tram and the bike. Path. So they, uh, you can see. So they got the like a green, uh, green grass on the track. So that uh, 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 initially I could not understand why they are wasting the road space uh, because they could use this the same space. But later on, I, I understood like uh, uh, why why it's uh, like uh, they got uh, uh, green space uh, or the this thing. And as uh, my stay was, uh, as I was like, a, uh, as days went by, I realized, so it's bike is not only about uh, uh, like um, uh, for uh, one, like a, uh, uh, it, it's a culture, it's, you know, uh, uh, it's like uh, everyone uses the bike. So for example, when I look back and when I compare, I see only bike Bike is used by the kids and the people who cannot afford the public transport or they, they cannot spend money on the transportation. So they, they use the bike and, and that was a very uh, surprising thing for me. Uh, and I could never imagine uh, uh, 
uh, our uh, city square uh, or some of the like a central uh, space in the city would look like this and that was a very big surprise uh, for me then uh, then this this was uh, since i um, uh, I, I'm working on the mobility, you know, mo mobility, my, so, uh, sorry, I forgot to tell you. So I'm doing a PhD and then my, I'm working on the mobility innovations. Uh, and certainly those were the shocks that I got and then I wanted to know more. And when I ta started talking uh, about it with my colleagues and uh, other people, uh, and then I got the interesting answers. So like, uh, and, and it was like biking was so normal here, so no one was talking about it. Uh, like it, it's just like you uh, you use it like uh, as you use like other appliances like you use as uh, your phone you know you, you just use it you you don't know uh, what's going on so that's uh, analogy that I was told like uh, so biking for Dutch people is like uh, uh, water for the fish so you just you know uh, use it uh, you, you don't uh, really think about it up oh, what's happened okay I think uh, the, I made the slide, but anyway, since it's here, uh, let's take a moment and think. So let's do this exercise. So say, for example, I got a friend who is completely blind and who cannot see what's going on in here, but uh, you have to help me explain uh, that friend of mine that what this picture is about. Anyone? What this picture is about? What do you see? Cool. Whatever. So, so there is no wrong answer, right? So it's like uh, this all answers. Are, I mean, no, every answer is right. It is it's about the perspective that how you look at the things, right? Danger. It's danger. Dangerous, dangerous for whom? For the deer. Uh huh. Anyone else? Like there is no wrong wrong answer to it. So, uh, road in the forest and there is an animal crossing. Road in the forest and animal is crossing. Yeah, uh, see, all answers are right, so there is no right or wrong answer. So it's about the perspective that how we look at it. So, so when I was back in India, so for me, streets was uh, always like a kind of a pipeline uh, which facilitated the transportation from one place to other or from point A to point B. So, so that was the only purpose of street because I showed the picture. So you, you can't really do anything like, as, as a, like apart from uh, being stuck in the traffic and somehow hope to go f where you want to go, uh, you can't really do anything. But the question is, is the street is really about the, only about the transportation or from the, for the movement from one place to another or you know, to facilitating the most efficient movement possible, is it? A street has other functions as well. So if we go back, so if you look at this street, what do you see? You see people, uh, I don't see, the, I mean, I don't think there is a car, there's a carts, yeah, carts. So uh, yeah, so you see, so what, uh, this street is serving as, so this street is not only serving as the most efficient pipeline to transport you from point A to point B, but it also facilitating the other uh, functions such as you see people standing there, maybe people are selling something, also you can walk, you can interact with people, I mean, uh, if you're from the small village or, or, or small city uh, where you know like a lot of your uh, neighbor, so you always see, say for example, if I'm walking in my village, so half of the time I'm doing like this, you know, like I see the people, I wave at them, I interact with them. So, so what, uh, uh, yeah, uh, so that used to be the function of the street, but with the uh, motorized, uh, motorized vehicle coming, then streets started looking to look like this, right. Uh, and, and this is the Amsterdam, so, and now it again looks like this. So, uh, so what fascinates me here is, so street used to look like this, then they turn to be like this, and then again, then nowadays they look like this. And then what drives that change? 
so my my interest is or you know uh, or or the interesting thing here is like what drives this change what what makes this change happen so i'll just give you like a few uh, uh, see again uh, uh, this is uh, again another street in the uh, city of amsterdam uh, sorry i mean i my most of the knowledge is very limited to amsterdam that's why that's why i would be talking more in terms of amsterdam so uh, this is also interesting uh, thing uh, about the amsterdam so when they were li- laying the uh, metro line uh, and this is called the new mart area uh, where they they used to have uh, the, the the this the, you see this the open patch that used uh, that was planned a uh, highway but later they uh, uh, they converted it into a more like a uh, uh, they they scrapped the plan of highway and then the, now the this square uh, this, this this same landscape lo- looks like this okay so uh, what uh, uh, so this change now you see the change uh, like um, uh, uh, that that has happened over a period of time so so the pictures i shown you is like almost uh, eight decades of the progress that how we how the uh, dutch uh, uh, the public transportation has evolved uh, evolved from more of a uh, very open space where people could uh, interact with and and street used to serve like a lot of functions then moving back to the cars uh, and then again coming back to bicycles then how this change has happened so first thing uh, it's not the first thing but there are like a lot of uh, contributing factors to it so one of the major factor is and that's uh, i find that is uh, really important especially uh, from the experience that we understand uh is uh, the people's movement like uh, how people uh, can f- uh, force uh, the changes that they de- uh, deserve uh because if you if you go t- go into the history and uh, you you would find that uh, uh, these these changes were not brought up by the municipality these were forced by the uh, local people who wanted uh, the uh, to change uh, or uh, change uh, Uh, make the make use of public spaces as it would suit them and and not for the very few people who could own a motorized vehicle so one of the uh, uh, one of the driving factor for this thing was in the year 1972 so in 1960 late 1960s there was a uh, 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 oil crisis that shot up the uh, gas prices uh, that that means the uh, driving uh, the cars were uh, was uh, getting expensive uh, and on the other hand uh, uh, simultaneously uh, there was like a highest number of deaths that is like in in the year 1972 there were like 3600 uh, the deaths uh, caused by the motorized vehicle and people were enraged by the fact uh, that those street used to be uh, was uh, like a public spaces where every could everyone had the equal access but now the access was restricted and people were dying so out of those 3600 uh, people most of uh, them were uh, children uh, and then there was a huge movement uh, by the local people uh, it's called uh, uh, pardon my the dutch pronunciation it's called kinder mode stop the kinder mode stop the kinder mode yeah Uh, so basically uh, I'll, i'll translate in english so i mean uh, sorry uh, it's like a stop the children murder so basically they they were seeing the cars uh, or the motorized vehicle as the killing machines they 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 literally used to call them a killing machine yeah that's the one of the representational picture uh, so uh, so you see how this the change is uh, so this the people's participation or the citizen participation can make that change happen because like if you uh, i mean so we get lot of uh, delegations from the other countries and and they they they, they say i mean when we take them on the tour and and they are like uh, you know you all, all what what you're saying you know it it makes sense uh, but our city is not amsterdam because amsterdam uh, looks more like a historical city it looks very very well preserved and all uh, but but what what matters is so 
the, this was not the case all the time. So, the infrastructure that we see now, uh, the convenience that we see now for the biking infrastructure uh, is uh, was not there always, but that was like forced. Uh, that that was the result of uh, decades long fight of, uh, by the citizens. Uh, uh, this. Only in Amsterdam or more places? Uh, this is the Kinder Mart. Uh, this is the protest was in other places as well, but uh, center was in Amsterdam. Uh, because there were like a lot of, uh, but, but this is the 3600 uh, people uh, death was uh, across the Netherlands, not only in Amsterdam. Uh, this was also, this picture you see, so uh, in the last bottom last picture, that's uh, John Lennon. Uh, uh, I hope uh, you know, this is, uh, this was the uh, rock, this is a rock star. And he came here and you see like a, uh, a bike in his bedroom. So this, this is one of the famous hotel in the Amsterdam. And uh, so, so you see, so this change is uh, how the citizens uh, is influencing the change they deserve. Uh, okay, uh, sorry, I forgot to ask you about your background, but that's more of a technical uh, planning thing. I'll just skip that one for now. Also, that's really important, uh, especially f uh, for me. Uh, why this uh, this the you know uh, uh, biking uh, is like a fish in the water for the Dutch people, because not only people make it as a part of life or the culture, but also the influential people make sure that they're seen as uh, seen on the bike. So this is the Prime Minister of Netherlands. Uh, uh, so what that does is that gives a strong message that, uh, as I told you in, uh, initially, that the, uh, in India we look down upon the cyclist as uh, they are like a poor people who cannot afford any other medium of transportation, and that's why they use. But what this does is that the influential people driving the, the for example, John Lennon, the Prime Minister of, uh, or the other other influential people riding a bike makes a point that uh, it's it's not only about the status, but it's about the culture that we develop, and, and it's about the sustainability. Uh, Lindsay is going to talk about this one, uh, but I had this thing. So I would like to conclude here with uh, 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 this uh, question here. So you see the two news uh, articles here. One is says the Amsterdam becomes the cycling capital of the world. On the other hand, the car ownership in the Netherlands is increasing to the highest level. And that's the interesting thing. Uh, so so uh, in, in India, when, when we talk about the biking, so usually we don't talk about the positive uh, sides of the biking, but this is uh, uh, what uh, goes uh, as a meme around, you know, people talk about it. So basically they argue that the biking is not healthy. So now here I would like to leave you with these two questions. Oh, sorry. Oh, I cannot go back with this one. Yeah. So uh, now, uh, what's going wrong? So what 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 is basically happening? Though the cycling is uh, the answered. Uh, sorry, Netherlands is considered as the cycling haven. Still, uh, we see the uh, rise in the car ownership and also this. Uh, 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 this uh, this kind of uh, like a growth mindset where we we want to have the higher and higher higher economic growth so that uh, economy prospers and that's the false assumption uh, uh, yeah so what what this demands is is uh, like uh, we uh, we need more like uh, interdisciplinary people people coming from uh, a very diverse disciplinary background to contribute to the cycling research so that uh, you, we can put more ho holistic understanding of the biking because the, till now the entire transportation domain is looked as a pipeline and more of a very uh, like a uh, through the eyes of the traffic engineers and is developed by the uh, uh, eyes of the uh, traffic engineers uh, and uh, yeah, from here, uh, Lindsay will take over and thank you for the attention. And we'll take the questions uh, after Lindsay's presentation. Thank you. 
So, we've had Vikas talk a little bit about cycling history in the Netherlands, how the Netherlands actually became the sort of nirvana of cycling as it's often described, but uh, I'm kind of here to ruin everything because my PhD goes over looking at Dutch cycling culture from a bit of a critical perspective. So, I think first up, the best place for cycling in the world. Yes, it is, but does that mean it's good? Which means it's good, right? Is it though? I hate to ruin everything, but yes, it's good relative to everywhere else in the world, but on a relative scale, you know, that's saying, okay, you come from Dallas, Texas, you come from New York City where there's barely any cycle lanes. Somewhere like Amsterdam is going to look like paradise because you have protected bike lanes because you do have a high modal share. But when it comes to being objectively good, you know, cycling is still a minority modal share in the Netherlands and cars still remain dominant in both traffic uh, design and engineering, and also to an extent in public policy, although least cycling has a seat at the table, which in very great many other countries, such as the UK, where I'm from, it doesn't. So at the moment, the Netherlands is approximately tied with Denmark for the highest rates of cycling in the world. Significant investment occurs annually, both in the construction of new cycling infrastructure, like the underwater bike parks just opened in Amsterdam, as well as expansion and maintenance of existing cycle infrastructure. Modal share is approximately 25% of all total trips, as a total of trips, not necessarily of distance. And that's one of the highest shares in the world, about tied with Denmark, repeat myself. But what's the problem? This isn't an exhaustive list, but while cycling rates in the Netherlands are indeed the highest in the world, cycling does still remain a minority modal share. Secondly, Dutch law mandates the use of cycle paths wherever they're available, which means road riding is illegal, which means if your cycling infrastructure is inadequate, legally you have to use it, no matter how busy, no matter how congested it is, while well, you've got cars to one side, which are using up the majority of the road space. And what this also means, the fact that the Netherlands does have extensive cycle infrastructure, is in contrast to places like Germany, the UK, and even some places in America, there exists relatively little pro-cycling advocacy, at least nothing that might be considered radical, due to almost a sense of complacency, particularly from the government, which is, we are the cycling nation, we export our expertise worldwide. What do we have to do better? Not really a huge deal. So it's like, because cycling is enabled, even though it's not necessarily prioritized in planning, there's sort of a lack of the radical pressure that there was throughout the 1970s and the 1980s to actually improve and change things. So we've got to get on to why that is. And this graph here is from one of the, uh, from one of the studies which I referenced extensively at master's level which was John Putcher and Ralph Bruhler's Making Cycling Irresistible from 2008. Now what this shows is average daily kilometers cycled relative to 1952, with 1952 being the peak at 100, and then you've got the scale going down through 2008. So this isn't completely up to date, but the picture is more or less the same with the exception of the COVID pandemic from which an awful lot of the research hasn't actually come out yet. So what we can see here is in 1952, if cycling was at 100% of its historical modal share, at the nadir of, of cycling rates in the Netherlands, it got down to a little bit less than 40% of that peak. And in all of the advocacy, all of the campaigns, stop the kid in the board, all of the investment in cycling infrastructure, has only managed to get it up to about 50% again of its historic peak. And it stayed more or less level there for the last 40 years at this point. So the big question, the big headline question, why is this? Well, in a word, cars. But I think we should probably drill down to that a little bit more. When it comes to cycling, oops, that's a bit back. No, no, piss. Sorry. <laughs> Haven't done a presentation in a while. Blah, 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 blah. So as I mentioned earlier, while the Netherlands does have a relatively high modal share of cycling at 25% world leading, the modal share of cars is approximately double this. There's an enormous amount of investment goes into highways, goes into car parking, and I can speak to this personally by the fact that I work as a side job as a feats courier in Amsterdam. And while Amsterdam does have cycling infrastructure and cycling is very much enabled by the design of the city, by the design of the streets, whenever you're using a bike which sort of doesn't fit into the mold of a typical Dutch bike, which is, you know, a Stadsfeet, so you've got the uh, coaster brake, you've got, you know, carrying racks, panniers of a specific size, you kind of realize what the limitations of this infrastructure are. For instance, if you have a backfeet, there's, a few, there's only a few places you're actually allowed to park that because as a Balsam model of feats, it isn't really included in the thought of like, well, what kind of cycles do we need to accommodate for when it comes to cycle parking? So 
We end up with sort of shortcomings that in a way are sort of rendered invisible by the fact that cycling does have a place of somewhat prestige relative to other countries in the Netherlands. But there's still, at the end of the day, a fair amount that's being obscured by the fact that the Netherlands is a cycling country, but it used to be much more of one. And this is sort of a topic of interest to me, because when you're looking at how to develop a cycling country in the culture in the UK, for instance, the Netherlands comes up constantly as a reference point. It is the country which pretty much every other government, every other country points towards in order to say, well, this is the example we should be following. This is the country which has got it right. And credit where credit is due. You know, you look at this, even on just relative terms, the rates of cycling in the Netherlands are double that of the UK in terms of distance cycled per person per day. And cycling is approximately 2% of trips in the UK, where it's 25% here. So yes, the Netherlands has got things right, but that doesn't mean it's perfect. And one of the biggest concerns to me, one of the biggest aims that I'm intending to research is, well, has the actual progress that the Netherlands has made in arresting the decline of cycling and making it part of the transport infrastructure, has that actually prevented the rates of cycling from growing and reaching back to their historic highs? Which particularly in light of climate change and the need to drive a mobility shift away from cars towards cycling again, because the bike is a very efficient machine. It takes about 1% of the resources to make a bike as it does a car. That's become more important than ever. So this sort of brings me to the next point, which is where else is looking at building a cycling culture and where else is perhaps taking a bit of a different tack to which the Netherlands historically has. So, excuse me, if we do a little bit of rearranging of the Dutch flag, not like that, I'm talking about cycling, not farmers. <clears throat> France. So Paris in France at the moment has had a new government come in over the last few years, which has made a very big point to prioritize cycling over car travel. And while there are some streets in Amsterdam, which historically were open to cars and no longer are, whenever you travel around the center of Amsterdam, particularly in the sort of work I do as a Fietzkroy, you see an awful lot of streets, which are historic cobblestone narrow streets on which cars are still allowed. What they're doing in Paris is actually completely blocking off roads to cars entirely. They're not building dedicated cycle infrastructure. They're saying, this road, which used to be for cars, is now just for bikes. Emergency access, yes, that's fine. But if you have a car, nope, you're not allowed. And that's sort of a bit of an interesting difference in approach versus the Netherlands, where the approach here has been, we're going to have this road, four lanes, for instance, you look at somewhere like, uh, you look at somewhere like the road that the University of Amsterdam sits on, you've got four lanes of cars, and then you've got two small bike paths either side. And what that says to me is that cycling has, in a way, become subsumed to this mindset of traffic engineering. It's just one modal share that needs to be accommodated for. It's got to have its place, but then cars have got to have their space. And that means that the, share, that the modal share of cycling is sort of frozen in place by the design of the infrastructure itself. Because you've got all that road space, which cars are allowed to use. Bikes are legally prohibited from doing so. And if you don't fit on the bike path, if you've got an electric bike, if you've got a back feet, if you've got much other than, you know, the stad speed standard, which the infrastructure is originally designed for, you haven't really got a place. So Paris is a very interesting example to me because they are looking at what the Dutch have done historically, what the Dutch government has done in relation to cycling and saying, well, how do we improve on that? How do we drive a mobility transition from nothing to you know, making a relatively car-free city, the 50-minute city, as it frequently comes up as. And it's interesting how starting from relatively little, as Paris has, has actually driven a more radical approach than we're currently seeing in the Netherlands, which is very much just sort of like an evolution on what already exists. So my point of interest at this point is, well, how do we change that? You know, how do we get back to the historic share of cycling that was seen in the Netherlands at its peak in 1952 from where we've been for the last 40 years, which is this plateau of cycling rates with modal share barely growing, with, with distances remaining relatively the same. And as I say, we've got climate change to deal with. Cars are a major driver of that, not just in direct use, but in their manufacturing, disposal, and the entire life cycle chain. And as much as it's made about electric cars, they, took, they still consume an awful lot of energy. They still have enormous embedded energy. It's not a solution either. So in my mind, we have to get cycling back up to that historic mobile share. We need to displace the car, not just accommodate it along with cycling into a scheme of transport. We've got to become, in a way, a cycling nation before a car nation. Whereas at the moment, as much as the Netherlands is friendly towards bikes, it's also friendly towards cars. A little bit too much, if you ask me. So that sort of is what I just talked about. But this is the point I kind of want to leave with. 
which is this last bottom point here. The first tarmac roads were built under pressure from cycling routes. They were not built to accommodate cars. Um, there's a wonderful book out there literally called Roads Are Not Built For Cars going over this. But this infrastructure, this road infrastructure, which is now dominated by cars, was originally designed and built for bikes. So I think it's about time we start looking at how to take it back. And that's me. So. Thank you.